What I want to do is show you how to build a, a relatively quick shelter, something that you can put up pretty quick. Now these are all poplar branches which I cut on the, uh, along the road allowance because they're going to be cut down by hydro anyway. The neat thing about poplar is when you, cut the, when you cut the sapling down, it sprouts right back up. Within two years, three years, I'll have poplars all out there again. And what you want to do is you want to get a rope. Measure your height, eh? Measure your height. That's obviously my height there. And just add another, whatever, six inches, right? Because you want to be able to lay down in this shelter. So just half it. Simply half it. And just tie a simple knot, right? And we'll put a peg through this knot into the ground and draw our circle. Make sure you keep the rope tight. Stick your poles in the ground, but leave the branches on, okay? Don't take them off yet. The idea is you got to get that dome shape happening. I'm going to put one, two, three, and four more in. Four more overhangs, and then we'll lace it, and we'll put the tarp on. The idea is um, you, you shouldn't have to use rope. If you do decide to use rope, um, try to use sisal twine or something that's going to break down, because in all likelihood, if you build this out in the forest, you're going to leave it. Uh, I have a couple out there that I have left and they just simply rot down to the ground, which is fine. Take your branches and wind them around, okay? That doesn't have to be... doesn't have to be pretty yet. Remember, if you're in a survival situation, man, you want to get this thing built, and you want to get it built fast. All these branches that you see, you can loop those around wherever you wish. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Just as long as you get this thing meshed together, you're good to go. So now what you want to do is you want to loop these branches around, okay? These these ones are gonna be your internal, I'm sorry, your side branches. So you just you just kind of want to weave it, alright? Just weave them in. Take your time. There we go. You always said don't cut the branches off, right? Because you can use them to tie. Like I said, by all means, you can uh, certainly use twine to clean these things up. Okay, this is the sisal, sisal, sisal. <laughs> I'm going to call it sisal because I don't know how you pronounce it. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is the stuff I'm going to use. This stuff, you can burn it. Actually, you should carry this sisal twine with you 
when you're whenever you go out this stuff makes an amazing fire lighter if if everything else is wet like today birch bark will still light but this stuff for sure it'll light okay a uh, neat little trick with this sizal is to actually coat it in wax if you coat it in wax uh, you've got a wick and that wick will light in any weather let's go let's tie this down the other thing too that the other thing i like about this sizal stuff is, is the fact that you know what it's completely natural so if you leave it in the bush it doesn't matter it just doesn't matter whereas with plastic you know the world we're in now cripes everything's plastic and Trying to keep it natural as you can. The dampness is creeping in. Yep, this is why a survival situation, it's like you have no time to waste, man. Just tying a clove hitch here. Until I'm shaking. I normally shake, but sheesh, I'm starting to get cold. It's okay. There we go. This goes here. All right. What this is going to do it's just going to frame the door up for me that's all clove hitch here and find the damn end of the knot shaking so much it's crazy no i'm not going to give up okay there we go that's a clove hitch okay now same deal bring her over she could be slid a bit this way yeah the chickadees they're all happy as I said before, I'm hardly in any survival situation right now. I'm right in front of the house, hence the road traffic and things. Um, so this here, just keep going around, going around your branch, right? Tighten up where you can. Come around, go back over. You see what I'm doing? And then what you want to do is this again. So you see what I did? You bring around the rope on the inside and you just frap it. That's called frapping, okay? And then you're gonna end up with some nice little half hitches again right here. That's not gonna let go. Not for a long, long time. There we go. Well, that's the door framed up. Beauties. You can notice it's, it's pretty tall. You wanna make the structure as low as you can possibly make it so you can sit up and it not stand. And the reason being is, if this is a survival shelter, right? you want to be able to heat this up really quick so that means bringing a rock in it or, or a, say an alcohol burner or something like that and put it inside this will the shorter the structure the better off you're going to be so once the structure is pretty much to your liking you can go afterwards and cut the poles down all the way around and insert them back into the regular holes i'll show you what i mean let's take um let's take another four maybe three inches off it Just go around. And then these pegs, when you pull these pegs out of the ground, you'll be able to use that for your for your pegs, for your shelter. Now let's face it, you're gonna be doing this with a knife. You're not gonna be carrying these things on any uh, trek. But since I'm here at my, my test site, I can do it. Yeah, I'm just inserting, I'm just certain inserting the poles back into the original holes that I had counted in the ground. And you can see that one let go. Now the door. Good. That's it for the finished frame. Now remember, this is a survival shelter, okay? This is something that uh, you're gonna build really quick. It doesn't take long. And then you're gonna throw tarp over top. Now a lot of people use, uh, you could use 
evergreen boughs. If you don't have a tarp, you could use evergreen boughs, but no way, shape, or form is that going to be waterproof. No chance. You'd have to use your, your rain jacket or a winter coat, put it over top, and then put your evergreen boughs on, and then you're without a coat, right? So carry a tarp with you. The tarp, the tarp for this one is about, uh, I'd get a 10 by 12, a 10 foot by 12 foot tarp. That'll cover the entire lodge, one tarp, right? And then you'll just have to crawl underneath the door. It's not about comfort. It's not. It's about survival, right? So the point being is, is that this here is basically a beaver lodge, right? So make sure that your door opening is big enough to get you in there. So you just crawl through, right? And then make sure that you can absolutely lie down in it, which is perfect. That's good. Okay, let's cover it with a tarp now. Snow load on this, not a problem. Like you get a ton of snow on this. In fact, the, the more snow, the better. Now, um... Let's get the tarp going. This one is a 10 by 12, like I stated earlier. And you know, if you fold it upright, it'll just fit in the bottom of your knapsack and you can pile all your other gear on top. I would always suggest that you carry a tarp with you, no matter where you go. You never know when the proverbial, you know what's gonna hit the fan, right? And being able to build something like this really quick is, uh, is important. By the way, this is a standard that's what they call a standard or a light gauge polypropylene tarp. I wouldn't suggest you buy the heavy ones because they're heavy. They're a lot heavier and you, you want to make sure your pack weight is down, right? So this is just a lightweight one. It's about 14 bucks for a 10 by 12. Okay, so let's take a tour of this thing. Looks like a big garbage bag, <laughs> but it's okay. This is not about being looking good, right? This is about being able to carry something with you and being able to build something in the bush really quick that's gonna keep you from freezing. And that's solid as a rock. Now you're gonna wonder like, well, this is, door doesn't totally close. It closes pretty good. But what I would do is I put my pack here when I'm inside. Now these gaps along the edges, you can fill in with uh, debris, forest debris, leaves, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. Fill them in though. Absolutely fill them in. The idea is to stay away from hypothermia. Hypothermia is deadly. If you start shaking, that's first stage hypothermia. You're going down, right? So the thing is, if you stop shaking and you haven't done any extra, any exercise or anything like that, you're in trouble. In the shelter that I've built, you can stuff it full of leaves. Let's say you're really stuck, okay? And you, yeah, you might have your tarp. Let's say you don't have a tarp and you've put evergreen boughs all over. It takes a ton of evergreen boughs. You need those evergreen boughs to be as deep as your arm is. In other words, you pack them in so your, your arm is, it's that deep in, right? Evergreen boughs, leaves on top, and you've got a, a, a really cozy shelter. Here's the issue though, ticks. It's a problem, right? You throw leaves inside that shelter, pile them up on the ground for a survival situation, do it in a heartbeat. But remember, ticks will come back to uh, life. They never really die, but they'll, uh, they hibernate, right? But they'll come back to life if they feel your body heat and they'll wiggle into you somehow. So the point being is that it is a problem. There's a couple things I can, I can suggest to you. Always carry with you a tarp. Always carry with you uh, a knife, whatever knife you prefer, right? Um, I always have mine with me. Uh, a hatchet, maybe. Knife is probably more important than a hatchet. Fire lighting, whatever it might be. My preference is a, is a, um, a feral rod, right? because I can light a fire anywhere with that in any weather. Here's the neat stuff. There's this really cool thing. I don't know if you can see this. It's made by Bushmaster. <laughs> now, this one is called the, um, this is called a hot seat. It's filled with foam, some type of foam, right? You sit on this thing, man, you would not believe how amazing it is. It weighs nothing, I mean nothing. You put it on the outside of your pack, it's waterproof, so it doesn't matter. Put it on the outside of your pack and carry it. Why the hell not? This is probably the best sleeping pad I've ever tried. Made by Thermarest. It's called Z-Lite and it just folds, right? And that's the unit there. 
you carry the hot seat and this and you're in luxury man if you're going to stay out at night or out in the bush for any length of time if you're going to sleep out that is the unit you need that reflects your body heat back to you keeps you off the cold let's put it in the shelter okay so how do you heat this place right your body heat's not enough to keep this this thing warm you can buy this stuff it's called magic heat it comes in a little kit it comes with this little bonnet type thing and this thing is for uh cooking on you can actually cook on this uh, that's actually burning now it's a blue flame the heat coming off of this is great if i was to close the front door on this on this shelter just this alone is enough to to, to keep you from freezing to death right another method you could use too it's a little bit more bulky and that's the issue candle right Go to Ikea and buy one of these goofy looking things. I don't know what they're for. I think they're for kitchen utensils. They're about eight bucks. Stainless steel, can't go wrong. Put a candle in it and you're, uh, you're good to go. Either method, be it the sterno, which is the alcohol burner, or the candle is gonna keep this place above zero and uh, you'll be good to go. My preferred method, to be honest with you, is the rock. I just heat a rock up in the fire pit. I'm going to have a fire going no matter what I do. So I might as well heat a rock up, bring it in. That rock will get to about 480 to 500 degrees Celsius. You bring it inside a shelter like this, you are instantaneously warm. Keep a couple rocks cooking on the fire while you're in here. And then you can change them out uh, as they cool down. Coupled with a, a candle or a sterno can, man, you've got it made.